many people think that Fukushima occurred years ago, and that's it. But can you talk about the the transgenerational implications of its continuing disaster? One of the things that I discovered when I was looking at the archival research was a report that was issued in 1956, and it's called the Bear Report. And it was actually funded um, uh, in response to public concern about atomic testing. And what was argued in that report is, is that when you're exposed to ionizing radiation, it increases the mutations. There is no doubt about that. And that those uh, mutations are transmitted across generations so that my children inherited all the mutations that I have acquired from environmental exposures or random mutations to my germline cells. And they also inherited it the same from their father. And then they acquire their own mutations from the exposures they have. So each generation is burdened with these mutations. And that they often, um, the scientists argued, are more likely to affect recessive mutations, uh, excuse me, recessive genes rather than the dominant genes, so that the effects of all these mutations can be relatively invisible in the sense that you don't see gross deformities. And if there's um, too many mutations, then you just won't have viability of the embryo. So that they're, in a sense, kind of invisible, but they describe them as being kind of like a, a ticking time bomb, because if you get enough of them, they affect health. So they could give rise to a variety of um, syndromes, and that over time, they can cause reproductive failure but you won't know until you have reached that point. And the um, science fiction film, The Children of Men, kind of plays on this, where you have relatively suddenly, within a few generations, a uh, complete reproductive failure. But prior to that point, you're going to have increased disease incidence in the population. And we are seeing increased rates of diabetes, increased rates of neurological disorders in adults. Uh, they're occurring among people at younger ages, and the actual rate is increasing. It's not just that people are living longer. We're seeing increased neurological disorders in children. Um, we're seeing uh, increased incidence of immunological disorders. And these are syndrome diseases. And it's very interesting because this is precisely what they described in 1956. And if you look at um, the United Nations' own scientific committee for studying the effects of um, atomic radiation, they have described these um, syndromes that result from the accumulation of transgeneration mutations. And it looks a lot like autism, for example, which is a it's not a single gene disorder. It's connected to multiple microdeletions in the human gene genome. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, manifest the same in each person. It's a little different in each person because the way they have been affected is variable depending upon the exposures that they had. So my concern is the concern that was laid out in 1956 is that we could be engineering our extinction through the you know acquisition of ever ever more mutations to our DNA, but we won't know it until it's too late. And I think that there's definite evidence that disease, um, especially neurological diseases, are increasing in frequency. And I think we better start paying attention to this potential, or it, it may be too late for us. There was just an NBC uh, expose the other day um, showing that the first impulse of the uh, regulatory agencies is to protect the nuclear industry from bad publicity rather than to protect the health of the population. Can you talk about that? Yeah, well, the reason the NRC was actually created was because the public was fed up with the Atomic Energy Commission because it felt that it was promoting nuclear and not, and not promoting public health. So the NRC was set up as a fix for the perception that um, 
the regulatory agency was corrupted, you know, regulatory capture. But the same concerns hold true today, and, and we see this uh, in the wake of Fukushima. They won't even talk about the possibility of there being a nuclear meltdown in an American uh, nuclear reactor. So yes, there's definite efforts to protect the um, perceived safety of the American nuclear industry and nuclear in general, and it's not it's highly contrived, it's not accidental, and you know, we could argue that it's propagandistic because it is not reflecting the scope of knowledge, it's reflecting um, the information that the industry wants the public um, to use when thinking about nuclear, and so it's, it's interested, it's not neutral. And that, to me, is very problematic. I just recently read a report from the California Department of Health Services Water and Radiological uh, Services Lab, and in it I could see that there were milk samples that were showing uh, radioactive iodine-131 and cesium-134 and 137 as late as June of 2012. Yeah, there's a plume of um, you know, contamination from the disasters that is circling the earth every 30 or 40 days, and that it comes down with precipitation. And the ongoing, you know, atmospheric releases from Fukushima are, are so hot that they rise high into the atmosphere. And so they, you know, they are conveyed through the conveyor belt, you know, of the, of the you know, the, the um, atmospheric winds that circulate the earth and when there's precipitation it comes down. So ongoing deposition of radionuclides from Fukushima is going to occur. And if there are any more major, you know, events, it just is adding to, you know, the burden of all these contaminants in the air. So, yeah, it's there and it's going to continue. Once it's in the environment, it's in the environment, and it's ultimately going to be bioaccumulating in animals, and plants, and in people. And it, we are going to, at the top of the food chain, are going to be bioaccumulating through biomagnification. And then, of course, it gets transmitted across generations. So we have to find energy sources that don't engineer our extinction. That is what we have to, and we have to create infrastructures, technological and social infrastructures that, that support human health rather than eroding it, or, or we're just not going to last very much longer. And there are many people who've come to this conclusion, as, as described in the Sixth Great Extinction Event book and the article that was published in, I think it was published in Nature, that kind of put this issue on the table. We are engineering a mass extinction event, which is equivalent to, you know, a meteor hitting the earth and destroying life, and, and we need to become conscious about it and make changes while we still can. So